Sang this song to me. There was a message in his melody, sweetest lyrics that I ever heard. There's a message in the songs of her. He said, Tomorrow is another day, but living is the only way. Tomorrow's gonna ever come. Listen to the words of the song. One forty five over ninety two. One eighty over one eleven. One hundred and eighty two over a hundred. And I had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest and then a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from invisible or silent. My memory is shot. When I woke up, I couldn't speak. I can't button up a shirt. I can't run. I've had to learn to swallow again. That's the only more minutes that I have. And I'm 33, so I never see this coming. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Had I done this, had I done that, hell, I messed up. Get back on your plan, or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhpp.org. I had to tell everything's changed. It is Tom. I've known Mikhail and Jero about six months. She's spunky. She's always cracking jokes. She's lighthearted about things. There was an immediate connection. And really young at heart, also. I try to keep up with what these young people is, is doing and knowing. <laughs> It's nice that Meals on Wheels created an opportunity for both of us to connect with each other. We laugh and talk about so many things. They both came and told me she was pregnant. We were just excited to tell somebody the news. We just found out ourselves. They hadn't even told their family. Oh my gosh, you guys did it. I felt good that I was the first person to know. We both want our kid to have some of her personality and her yeah. characteristics. I said, you guys have no idea how I really, truly feel about you. Oh, she's making me cry. <laughs> Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, let's do lunch. Greetings and welcome to A Sip of Inspiration. I'm Stephanie Wilson Coleman, your host for today's episode of Financial Matters. As always, we do regular shows about how we handle our money, what we should think about when we're handling our money, and actually how we should look for ways to better invest. Because at the end of the day, you get rich by saving more than you spend. Joining me today is the Einstein of Finance, Eric January. So I know you guys are going to have a lot of information today. You're going to need to write all of that down. And as usual, you cannot watch this show without pencil and paper. So we're going to take a short break right now, bring Eric on, and that will give you an opportunity to get ready for managing your finances. Because I love you. I want to be your only guy. Because I love you. Skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you. I just want to be with you so freaking much because i love you i waited for you after chem lab you were walking with mark because i love you you shouldn't be hanging out with that dude you should know how dumb that makes me look i don't care if she's your lab partner why do you have texts from him because i love you this number delete because i love you this jason number delete and and ben delete because i love you i should smash your phone i'll let you give me your password instead because i love you I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's OK. Because I love you. Y you understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love.
A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to A Sip of Inspiration. Joining me today, as promised, is Eric January, the Einstein of finance. I absolutely love that. So, Thank you. So, this time of year, as a, as a matter of fact, it's a shame that we only devote this time of year to sitting down and getting naked with our finances, because that's something we should do regularly, because mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to make a big splash once a year. You know, it's like anything else. You've got to build the momentum. You mm -hmm. need to do something every day. So. Today I wanted to just catch up on financial matters, what to do with the tax returns, or the lack, so the lack of tax returns. And how do people start planning going forward from this day, making it a daily practice or at least a weekly practice of managing their money? Right. Yeah. Well, one of the things we're talking about tax returns, mm -hmm. and uh, they just recently passed, or, or a year ago they passed the, the Jobs Act, where they not the Jobs Act, but they cha uh, changed the law. And they basically made it permanent where corporations have a very low tax rate and individuals have a uh, tax rate uh, where uh, over a period of time we've been reduced by about 2% per bracket. And some people have been experiencing some benefit, but the majority of people haven't experienced much of a benefit at all. And at the end of the year, uh, people often want a return. They want to get this large lump sum so they can go to Best Buy, so that they can go and buy a car, so that they can do uh, plan for a vacation. And uh, one of the questions that uh, many people have, and I was speaking to some other clients, and uh, they were saying it's actually sort of retarded that you want the government to hold that much of your money until the end of the year. So one of the things yes, that... It is. It yeah, is retarded. Right. I mean, holding $12,000, $10,000, and you know you need the money, but people are using it as a way of forced savings. So I think one of the things that we really need to reconsider is just basically exercising that discipline. If we know that we've got that money, set up a savings account. And uh, if you want to have that money, start showing a little self-discipline and putting that money aside on a regular basis for yourself. So if you need it throughout the course of the year, you won't have to go to a payday lender. You won't have to go and ask your family members, or you won't have to raise your 401k, which is a very common thing. During the course of the year, people will put their money in a 401k uh, throughout the entire year, and then uh, something will come up, a medical emergency, or uh, they will maybe have to buy a house, or some of those things you mm -hmm. can do and not have to pay any taxes. But in many instances, you will get penalized a tax penalty for taking your money out of your 401k or retirement account prematurely. But if you had that money that you were getting from your refund in an account, you could use it versus getting penalized. So how would people structure their finances so that they do get their money all year long? Because I don't think people realize that when they get that money in March, mm -hmm. April, May, or June, depending upon when you file, it's, it's been an interest-free loan to the federal government. That's right. You're not getting any interest on that money. Right. So they held, used their, your money, did whatever it is they needed to do or wanted to do with your money, and you didn't see any benefit. Right. So the thing that you could easily do is just go to your employer and adjust your W-4 withholding okay. uh, certificates. And that's basically the number of allowances that you claim on your paycheck. So if you're claiming zero, meaning you want the government uh, to withhold the maximum amount from your paycheck, start claiming one or two. So what that end up doing is increasing your net take home pay. And then that additional money that you normally wouldn't get, put it aside. Put it in some, have an automatic savings plan where the money is being deducted automatically from your account and being deferred to another account. And that's the easiest thing that you could do. Okay, and to reiterate that, you need to do that right away. Don't wait yes. two or three paychecks right. to do it because then you have incorporated that extra cash mm -hmm. into your lifestyle. Right. So if it's $40 a pay period, $50 a pay period, mm -hmm. immediately set up that savings to where it is automatic right. so that you don't have to think about it, you don't have to talk yourself into it or out of it, but mm -hmm. that it happens automatically. Yes, right. So uh, I would definitely encourage that, but then also in, in regards to financial matters, uh, people are, uh, at this time of the year, uh, it's about to be springtime. It's going to be a busy time. People are going to actually start looking for houses. 
Uh, maybe I uh, understand millennials at one point, they were concerned, didn't want to buy houses. They just wanted to live in trailer homes. Yeah. But now they're discovering <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was a real popular thing. Millennials, yes, okay. uh, not necessarily tra trailer homes. They were buying mobile homes okay. because their careers are so mobile and they were living in very high cost areas. So they were buying mobile homes and living, living in mobile home parks. So, okay. but now millennials want to buy houses and they are actually uh, in competition with some of the large real estate investment trusts that have been buying, been buying single family houses in the thousands. So now is the time uh, we're talking about financial matters. How about looking at your credit report and making sure you're in a position when it's time to buy a house that you can actually, uh, if you're not paying cash for it, be able to get a decent interest rate on a mortgage so that you can pay it off and put yourself in a better position because once the house is actually paid for, then you've eliminated a bill. And you're in a better financial position because you're not uh, having to continue to pay that 1000 to $2,000 a month that people are often paying to, to live uh, in a house or in an apartment. So, so what, there's a lot of talk about being in a 700 club as far as the credit reports are concerned. Mm -hmm. And that supposedly that will get you lower interest rates or get you better, better deals in the marketplace. So is that valid? Is that 700 credit score like the magical place to be? It is definitely the magical place to be. When I used to be in the mortgage business, if you had a 500 or a six, if you had a 620 credit score at that time in the early uh, 2000s, you can get the lowest interest rate available in the marketplace. But then after 2007, they re uh, the banks reassessed their risk position and obviously said 620 was obviously too low because too many people default on their mortgage. So they raised the standards to the seven and eight hundreds. And now when you're in the mid sevens, now you qualify for a conventional mortgage from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which means you're gonna ultimately end up getting the best interest rate the marketplace. Well, I'll say you can get the best interest rate the marketplace is gonna offer because if you're not aware of what a credit score is, a bank, bank, mortgage broker, or mortgage banker could still offer you a higher interest rate, although you still qualify for a lower interest rate. So you really need to be aware of where your credit score is at so that you can get the lowest possible interest rate because what that means is it reduces the cost of ownership and you'll be able to get out of debt faster and keep more of your money in your pocket versus just transferring that interest to the lender. Let's back up a little bit to the credit reports, and I'm taking yes. notes, so those of you at home won't feel bad if you're, <laughs> if you're taking notes also. What should we look at when we review our credit reports? You want to look for the accuracy of the information. And, I, and I'm no credit report expert, but I've looked at a, enough of them to know that uh, credit bureaus can have inaccurate information. And uh, if something is inaccurately reported on your credit report, say that, for instance, there's a medical bill, and uh, you know that you paid that medical bill, but it's showing up as a collection. You have a right to call that, uh, contact that credit bureau and dis dispute it and get that taken off your credit report. Or if, want to say for instance, you've got a car loan and that car loan is saying that you are 30 days delinquent. You need to contact that lender and dispute that information to make sure that all of the information on there is accurate. And then also what you need to do, I've got clients uh, that uh, live here in the Illinois area but somehow, people in Florida are using their credit scores. That has, credit happened, reports. That has happened to me. Yes. As you pull your credit report right. and you say, you look through the people and you, I say, who are these people? I right. don't know these people. Mm -hmm. And then I have disputed that and they have removed those from my credit report. Right. And I believe uh, everyone is entitled to a free annual credit report at least once a year. So you should get that free credit report and look over it just to make sure that all of that information that is on the credit report is not only accurate, but it's also you. You don't want yes. somebody else. But say, for instance, if you've got a child and you're a man and you're a junior and that person's a senior, it's so easy uh, to have seniors information showing up on juniors and juniors showing up on seniors, particularly when you have the same address. So you really need to pay attention to the credit report because it will affect uh, what type of uh, loan that you're able to get if you're in the market uh, for a loan to expand your business, uh, to purchase the house, purchase the car. I I'm saying this because uh, you don't often have to use credit in order to buy these things. If you save, and put your money uh, uh, to work, you can eventually just pay for things in cash. 
And the credit report also will give you some indication if there's some hint of identity theft going on. That's right. Because stuff will show up on that credit report. Right. And as Eric says, you do it once a year. I do mine on my birthday. It's easy to remember. Because mm -hmm. I know that once a year thing slips for you. So I do right. it in my birthday month. That way you get them. You are entitled to all three reports. That's right. And review all of them because there's different information I discovered. You would think that they're the same. They may be 95%. Mm -hmm. identical, but there is always that 5%. Someone else's name came up on mine in one, but didn't show up on the others, or some bill that was taken care of years ago mm -hmm. showed up. Right. And you, there are letters online that you can use word for word. Just plug in your name and information that you can send to the credit, re the credit bureau. I did both. I, go on, I went on their websites and filed um, a dispute, and I sent a letter uh, with delivery confirmation just to be sure that it was taken care of. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised what can happen in that credit report. Sure. And those three bureaus are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Ex yes. Those are the three uh, credit bureaus. Now, there are others, but those are the three that are used the most. Mm -hmm. Right. And you mentioned paying with cash and not necessarily needing, needing a credit report. If That's you right. have cash, they're not running your credit. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, a Dave Ram Ramsey always says, what do you care about your credit score if you're paying with cash? Right. And, and one of the things that I like to emphasize, there are two types of credit scores. Uh, one is your consumer credit report, and the other is how much money you're making. If you're making enough money and show enough discipline uh, with what you're doing with that money, you will not need credit in the long term. In the short term, I understand that people uh, should t uh, often advise that you should be able to pay cash for everything. I just don't think that's a reality living in the inflationary environment that we do. If you try to buy uh, a house in a decent neighborhood, uh, more than likely most people are not born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They can't pay $100,000 for a house in cash. You can if you want to wait 20 years, but then now you paid rent for 20 years. or paid. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity cost to it. So I, uh, although I'm opposed uh, to using excessive amounts of debt, and the reality is, if you use it prudently and pay off the debt in accelerated fashion, you'll actually come out ahead. Because most of the debt, particularly when it comes to housing, is something that you can deduct on your tax return, which is another thing. Most people uh, used to itemize. And, uh, but with this uh, new uh, tax law, most people are not going to itemize anymore. Because if you're married, you're getting a $24,000 deduction right off the back. And most people don't have that amount of itemized deductions, even when they're taking into consideration their charitable contributions, their uh, state and local income taxes, and also uh, their interest uh, that they're paying on the house. So it's just a standard deduction. So I believe that you can get ahead. You just have to really plan and think about the direction that you, where you want to be and figure out what you got to do to get there. So the credit score being in the mid-70s, so let's mm -hmm. go back to that a little bit. So okay. when you're going to buy a home mm -hmm. and you know your credit score is in the mid-70s, mid I know that um, there are, are websites that you, and apps that you can use that will help monitor your credit score for you so that you can get daily alerts as to how you're doing and you should probably sign up for some of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do you know if you're getting the best mortgage percentage or car loan percent that they offer because sure. they go back to the, if it's a car you know they go back to the finance director and then they come back and say oh we got this at this right. how do you know that that's the best right well, if you're going to buy a car this is one of the prime things before you go to a car dealership and you know that you're going to get a loan you should uh and you know that you need finance in order to buy the car that you need to purchase the first thing you need to do is actually get financing before you go to the dealership because uh, there is a difference between a wholesale rate and a retail rate. Uh, when they're going back and forth between the salesperson and the uh, sales manager, uh, they're basically uh, first trying to negotiate the price. But then after they negotiate the price, you go step into the finance department. In the finance department, uh, what they're going to get is a wholesale rate. The wholesale rate uh, for a car loan may be 6%. Anything above 6% that the finance manager charges is a bonus to them. They're getting paid a commission. So it's their, in their interest in how the finance manager earns money for themselves and for the car dealership is by charging you a higher interest rate than what you're entitled to. So you have to be aware of that information by looking on the website. Uh, this is the information age. You can be in the car uh, sales manager's uh, seat 
pull out your smartphone and go to bankrate.com or go to any of these uh, websites that advertise the competitive interest rates for auto loans, for home mortgages, and all of the things, even CD rates. Look at them and say, well, you're offering me 9%, but they say on this website that I should be able to get a 6%. So why are you offering me 9%? And because at the end of the day, it's just a car. And they need to sell that car to you in order to get anything. So you have to be willing to tell them, no, I'm not going to accept your offer and be willing to walk out the door. And I guarantee you, when you start walking, they'll say, oh, Mr. January, just have a seat. <laughs> yes. I think we can work this out. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do get right. to the door and get home, they've left three messages on your phone. That, that's right. Home. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Don't buy that other car from that other, other <laughs> deal. We can work this out. <laughs> that's right. We can <laughs> right. Work this out. So uh, you have to be willing to stand your ground and do what's in your long term and short term uh, financial uh, interest. So we're going to take a break. And while we're on break, I want you all to look up bankrate.com. It's a free site. OK, mm -hmm. get familiar with it. Uh, also go to Credit Karma and Credit Sesame. Get familiar with those. Those are two, two credit monitoring sites that are mm -hmm. free. And you should have, and there are probably more. Those are just some that people who have, I've talked to have had very good success with. So we're going to take a break, give you an opportunity to go and look at those three websites, and we'll be right back. On December the 19th, I... Um, went to a meeting that Friday night, and in the meeting I began to have chills and fever, and that went for about a few minutes or about an hour. And after that, it was right after that, I began to have um, deep breathing problems. My, um, every time I would breathe deep, my chest would hurt. So I left the meeting, and um, when I got outside, I just asked God to get me back to Stanford safe. Um, I left and I drove to Stanford to Stanford Emergency Room. What I learned is that it's very important to make sure that you do a yearly exam um, on your entire body, um, that you do an inventory of things that you know that happens in your family. That's why it's very important to have a physical each year, to make sure you're on top of those things. Um, this way that you can stop it before it occurs, or before it gets worse. Um, so these are things that you have to really monitor. Make sure you have it on your calendar every year at the same time that you have these tests. I'm happy, I'm very busy in my life, and I try to tell people to stay active. I encourage all women to go red. Greetings and welcome back to A Sip of Inspiration. This is Stephanie Wilson Coleman, known as the Empowerment Doctor, and I'm your host for this segment of A Sip of Inspiration. And today's show is all about financial matters. Eric January, who is the genius, the Einstein of financial genius as far as I'm concerned. He does all things finance. And we're talking about everyday things that you can implement into your life right now. On the break, we were talking a little bit about that car lot experience. So yes. when you're sitting in that, in that chair and you love that car, okay? So it's a whole psychological game. They put you in the car that smells good. They put mm -hmm. you in the car with more bells and whistles than mm -hmm. you requested. So all of a sudden, you're feeling like you're on top of the world and you have bonded with that car. Okay, it is now an emotional experience. You go back, the finance guy runs back and forth, and you know you went to bankrate.com and you know it should be 6%, but they come out talking that it's gonna be 8% or whatever. And if you don't get it now, you're gonna lose the car. And you actually experience some emotional loss. But I want you to like get a hold of yourself at that point. Right? And remember that at the end of the day, 
it gets you from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. They don't make a car that has not been carried away for service off of a flatbed. Every mm -hmm. one of them needs service. Mm -hmm. And you actually have to be on a bus stop to see how cute you look in that car, okay? So remember that. It is just a car. Right. And the difference between a 9% rate and the 6% that you deserve is actually robbing you of your ability to save money because it's got to come from somewhere. That's right. Yep. It is a gain and a loss. Right. Um, when you are paying interest on a loan, no matter what type of loan it is, you're basically paying rent. Rent is not something that you get back at a later date. It's an expense. It's taken away from all of your net assets. So if you want to get ahead, you've got to reduce all of the rent expense you pay, and you've got to start paying yourself. You've got to, I mean, if you've got to uh, borrow some money from a 401k, at least when you're borrowing money from a 401k, you're repaying it with interest. And you, in other words, you're repaying yourself. So if you have money in a savings account and you use the same principle, uh, you can pay yourself back uh, on a monthly basis so that when it's time to buy another car, you've already got the money in the account for it. So because cars, uh, they've got planned obsolescence. You're not going to be able to keep a car forever. I don't care how much you baby it. Uh, the mice will get to it, uh, the rust and oxidation, or uh, just plain obsolescence. You'll get tired of driving it. Now, the car can be in great, uh, great shape, but you may want some of the newer features. It's like some of these cars are like spaceships today. They're, they're almost driving themselves. Got sonars and all of mm -hmm. this stuff around it. And you've got one of these cars from the 1970s. You may love it. But maybe you want some analog brakes, and you want that. To, <laughs> you want right. those features uh, that will stop for you. If you're looking at a billboard and you take you off the road for one second, that could be an accident. Accident. But with the new sonars in the uh, automobiles, they can stop for you. So uh, I'm saying all of that to say we may be totally content with the car that we have. It could be a Rolls Royce, and just down the road, not because we're materialistic, we may just want something else. We right. may want to treat ourselves, and we deserve to treat ourselves. We want to just work our entire lives just so that we can save something for the next generation. And we don't know what they're going to do with it most of the time. We can train them and hope that they're going to do the right thing in terms of accumulating uh, wealth and taking care of their family. But we don't know what they're going to do. Right. We only know what we're going to do. Exactly. And if you work hard, you should play hard. Right. And I love the term planned obsolescence. You're right. They right. plan the cars to be obsolete. So mm -hmm. anymore... If you're driving something from 70s, 80s, or even early 90s, what do you do with your smartphones? Right. You're, and the same thing with the smartphones. It's mm -hmm. like, so you're going to be in the market for a car eventually, but be in the market where you have the information that you need so that you can make the best decision ever. Right. Okay, now let's talk about cash. Yes. So cash, I believe, so I was like on the fence Cash, credit, mm -hmm. cash, credit. Mm -hmm. And then I had an instance in life where I had a lot of cash. And then there was an instance instance that cost me a lot of cash. And I wasn't happy about that. But then I remembered, but I had the cash. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to borrow it mm -hmm. because I, the God, that would have doubled what, right. I, what I had to pay back. So you have to have cash. So if you're starting from a position where... You are literally, you don't have much money. How do you start to save to accumulate cash? Sure. That, that first thousand dollars that you don't need. Right. So one of the first things and one of the best things I really recommend that a person do, particularly in this day and age, if you've got a bank account, download all of your information from the bank. Down, we're, we're at the beginning of the year. Download a whole year of your transactions from whatever bank uh, you deal with. And then put them into some financial software uh, like Quicken and then analyze all of what you spent your money on. You'll be amazed at how much a $5 cup, cup of coffee cost over the course of the year. And when you start looking at those little bitty things, because often we have a tendency of saying, oh, it's only $5, it's only $3. But by the time you added all of those $5 and $3 purchases up, that's thousands of dollars that you actually could have kept. And at the end of the day, is the coffee that great? You can make it at home. They've got all sorts of cappuccino machines. And mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee, but uh, they've got all <laughs> sorts of machines where you can make a lot of this stuff in your house uh, today. And it can be just as quick, just like it, uh, it's something that came out of a restaurant. So 
I recommend that you analyze all of your expenses, all of your income, all of your expenses, and figure out, okay, what can I cut back on? Because a lot of it is just uh, superficial stuff that's not necessary, stuff that we can absolutely uh, live without and actually it would put us in a better position in the long term. And if you save $1,000 today and you do the same thing uh, tomorrow, before you know it, you're going to have a significant sum of money. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got, say, for instance, three months of wages uh, saved up, as uh, Jesus talked about in the parable of the uh, uh, talents, once you, or a parable of the minimums, minimums, once you've got that money saved, now it's time to you to say, okay, let me start putting this money to work. Cause, so just as I go out and work on a nine to five, let me find a job for my money to do so that it can start making money for me. And eventually you will have so much money coming in just from the money that you put to work, you won't have to work. So, so, so savings uh, to an extent in cash, as Stephanie mentioned, because she mentioned how she had to dip into her reserves in order to pay some things. Well, we all have those things that come up in life and we need to have reserves. And typically three, three to six months uh, should be sufficient. Anything above that, what you need is to have some assets where you can actually mm -hmm. access something that may not be liquid cash, but is money that if you had to liquidate something, you still have mm -hmm. something that you can tap into in order to take care of that emergency. So uh, that's what I recommend. I mean, because cash yeah, I, is, uh, what I like to right. say, cash is king. Cash is king. Um, right, and in that For instance, now, that instance, it was assets. Mm -hmm. So they earned interest on it. Yes. So, I mean, it was working, but it was there. Right. And that way you didn't have to, you didn't ha I didn't have to borrow it mm -hmm. and pay that ungodly interest rate. I mean, any interest rate would have been too much. Mm -hmm. So this thousand dollars cash. So if you don't have any way, a lot of people don't can't see their way into savings. I suggest that income tax return, if you're getting one, that you start there. Mm -hmm. That I don't care what you promised to anybody that goes into the bank towards your third, your one hundred dollars emergency fund. You keep that, that mm -hmm. because the goal is three to six months but you need to have a thousand dollars so that gosh if you got to have an emergency break change you don't have to, you, you you don't have to put it on the credit card you know you need to be able to pay cash for something so start there and i know you probably promised everybody that you were going to do everything so go back and clean up those promises and make a different deal so maybe mm -hmm. you're not going to go to orlando to disney world okay Maybe wherever you live, there's enough things that you haven't seen. There are enough attractions that are very good attractions. Because I think we take we, we forget about the things that are in our neighborhood. So when I lived mm -hmm. in Florida, I very seldom went to Disney World. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, but, I mean, because it's there, you know? Right. And it's hot, and you go once, and you're done. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we live, in, we live in, in Chicago, so you've got free museum days. So go to the Adler Planetarium, the Shed Aquarium. Mm -hmm. Do some of those things. Right. Go to the libraries, but save that $1,000. Mm -hmm. Or maybe have cook a pizza at home night. Uh, because at the end of the day, what your children remember is the time that you spent with them and not the amount of money that you spent with That's them. That's for sure. So start there. And then Eric mentioned earlier, and I thought about this, is that when you change your deductions at work so that you're getting more money, and you save, so you save that money, and then as you get raises, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have more money. Start saving the raises. Train yourself to live out of what you make right now. Right. So future income gets saved. So there is always a way. Right. And that download a year's worth of transactions mm -hmm. into Quicken, it's like, or any of the software, because Quicken has a free version. There are lots of free versions of mm -hmm. software out there that would allow you to to uh, to categorize your expenses right. so take advantage of it don't use that now thousand dollar smartphone just for videos just for photos just for social media mm -hmm. let's use it for something that can help us get ahead so the next time you're presented with upgrading your cell phone you got some cash and you can say hey I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for it it's worth about four hundred and fifty dollars to me I got four hundred and fifty dollars I have seen people say yes All right more than they've said no to that. So mm -hmm. those right. are some great ideas. So um, so then, so they're going to identify their expenses in Quicken. So Eric's not a coffee drinker, but I like an occasional cup of coffee. You're running $3 a day mm -hmm. at a minimum. 
So if you did that five days a week, that's right. fifteen dollars mm -hmm. a week every week. Whereas if you had the coffee, the fancy coffee, let's get the fancy coffee maker, you're about a hundred dollars or so if you catch it on sale at at Thanksgiving or Christmas or uh, President's Day or any of those or just plain old dry summer, you're about a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And then those the cups that they come in, you get twenty of them. For anywhere from nine ninety nine to fifteen ninety nine, so you already come out ahead. Mm -hmm. So you would end up after about three months recouping that expense. So then the rest of the year, the, the remaining nine months, you're not spending that three dollars a day. Right. That fifteen dollars a week can go into your savings plan. Right. And, and another thing, uh, I mean, I drink coffee, but I drink a lot of water. And uh, at one time, we didn't have a water filter on our, our refrigerator. So I was buying these huge cases of water uh, for the entire family and hauling them up the stairs. A lot of work paying maybe $20, $25 a week uh, just to buy the uh, cases of water. I made one of the best investments ever by buying a water filter uh, that filtered out basically all of the lead contaminants, tasted just as good as the water bottles. And I saved a lot of money doing that. Because well, so I drink I, a lot of water, too, so water right. filters, right? Yes, buying a water filter. Something that simple was able to, I, I did the math, and it saved me like over $540 a year. Because it comes with the cartridges, you put the cartridge in, and then you just get a, a reusable bottle that you fill up uh, with your water, and all of a sudden, you still got some purified water. You don't have to taste all the lead and stuff in the water. But and not only that, it had an environmental uh, uh, benefit too, because now I'm not contributing to the uh, pollution of the oceans with all this plastic floating around. Oh, that's a great idea. Right. So it was a double win. I saved some money and I'm saving the environment. Right. So there's so many different ways that we can save money. Uh, and one of the things that Stephanie mentioned, and I just know this because of uh, Stephanie, she made one, one, uh, 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 one thing that she mentioned uh, just recently about save your raises. Now, Stephanie is being modest because I know for a fact that she has done this and she's not a low income type of person. Uh, Stephanie is doing very well for herself and she has been saving her raises for so much. That's how she was able to pay for these uh, unexpected expenses that she incurred. And, but she, she didn't live off of her wages. So if she went from, say for instance, 30 to $60,000, she still lived off of $30,000. Most people can't do that. You can do something, you may not be able to do it at all. But she did it. And it works, I've seen it. it, it she, and she's a testimony. Look at her, that, that's not a cheap outfit she <laughs> has right. on. <laughs> So, another thing about shopping, right? Because <laughs> I believe in a fair amount of retail therapy, all right? But you have to be smart about shopping, too. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in college, one of the places I worked was a retail warehouse for mm -hmm. a high-end department store. Uh, and, and that would be considered the level of uh, a Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. So we were checking this merchandise in. And I remember uh, that day I was assigned to check in and price a box of a case of ties okay the case of ties at that time this is years ago so a high-end tie at that at that time would have been an expensive tie would have been $25 okay a case of ties that had about a hundred mm -hmm. ties in it was the same as one tie mm -hmm. so that's when I discovered that they saw one tie and they got their money back everything else was profit Mm -hmm. So, never pay retail for anything. Right. Wait till it goes on sale and wait till it goes on deep discount sales. Mm -hmm. And there's another rule is if you can't wear it with three things you already own, you don't need it. And if you just love it, then just love it in the store and leave it. Go try it on in the dressing room, spend some time, walk around and say, I look pretty. Take your picture, okay? But leave it in the store. Because all you're going to do when you get home is not wear it, or you're going to have to go buy something else to wear it with. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to save your money right. or get absolute use out of everything you have mm -hmm. and not go into debt. Right. So for those of you who have retail therapy, that's how you do it. So high-end shoes, go try them on. Right. Yeah. Take pictures. Right. Okay? Raise the consciousness. Like, go mm -hmm. visit them, as I call it. Mm -hmm. So I go visit my high-end right. shoes in the store. Right. Okay? 
because until they can get to a price mm -hmm. that is a reasonable price to pay for a pair of shoes, don't buy it. Because at the end of the day, you're making another family wealthy that's sitting in a place that doesn't even know that your community has a need. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things, uh, if we want to save money, one, we got to have a goal of actually right. saving some money. But then two, uh, when it comes to saving money, we got to put money into perspective. Money has a, a purpose. And one of the purposes is to help us get ahead. And uh, if we want to get ahead, we have to make some conscious decisions right. about what we do with our money and realize that life just doesn't consist of all of these things that we have. Or as Jesus said, it, uh, life doesn't consist of the abundance of things. Right. So now we're going to hold that thought because okay. I want to come back and talk about that in the next okay. segment. And sure. we're going to take another break. I know we've load, we have laid a lot of information on you all. This is great information. So uh, take a deep breath. Get a glass of water. Hopefully filtered water from your, for your own sink. So we'll be right back. I want to thank everyone for making this day so special. Dad, you've been my inspiration. I love you. I love you too. And Mom, I miss you so much. Type 2 diabetes steals the lives we cherish most, but it can be prevented. Almost 80 million Americans have prediabetes, but because prediabetes doesn't always have symptoms, 9 out of 10 people who have it don't even know it. Know your risk. More importantly, do something about it. Eat better, stay active, and lose weight. You have a lot to live for. Stop diabetes for yourself and the people you love. Learn how at CheckUpAmerica.org or talk to your doctor. What? I don't know. Your phone's ringing. No, it's fine. It's still ringing. You don't want to get it? What if it's an emergency or something? It's, no, it's probably just a friend. Is it who I think it is? If it's if it's who I think it is, he wants one thing, and you're you're too foolish to even realize why he's calling you right now at 11:30 p.m. at night. Because he's your friend? You don't have a safe place to come home to. Nothing in your world seems right. This is a place where I don't feel This is a place that I call my home. Help turn things around for a child. Become a foster parent. Welcome back to A Sip of Inspiration. I'm Stephanie Wilson Coleman, the Empowerment Doctor, and this is the Financial Matters segment with Eric January. So, we laid a lot of information on you, and we took a break right at the, Jesus said that money is not the abundance of things. Well, yeah. Yes, I mean, it's not for the abundance of things. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit, because sure. I think we've got our relationship with money a little bit confused. That's right. Right. And, and uh, particularly, we live in a materialistic world, particularly with these kids. The kids want to have an iPhone. Uh, they got to have a uh, $1,000 uh, blue jeans with holes in them. Uh, they got to have all of these things, and they just think that uh, life is going to, uh, they'll only have life once they have all of these things. But what happens when you lose those things? Do you just lose your life, or do you take your life? And no. That's why Jesus said life doesn't consist of the abundance of things. It's what uh, the things are things that are supposed to help us uh, improve our life. But our life doesn't consist 
or we don't have life because we have those things. So we can't get put things out of perspective where we gotta have the latest car, we gotta have the latest watch, and we gotta have uh, the best jewelry. That's not what defines us. We're exactly. much more than the things that we own. Right. Uh, so several years ago, I, I had a homelessness experience. Mm -hmm. So all the things went. And as you said, then you realize you still have a life. You still have to right. get through this experience. You still have to figure out what's important in life. And you still have to go forth. Mm -hmm. And it boils down to everything that becomes important has nothing to do with the things that you have that are outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, my, one of my fears is we have spoiled the kids with, like you said, cell phones. They all have phones, they have tablets, they have everything. As far as I'm concerned, those are electronic babysitters, but they've got all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just keep thinking in the back of my mind, if they are in trouble, nowhere is the bad guy going to say, oh, let me let you get your phone out of the bottom of your purse or outside of your book bag so you can call your parents and let them know you're going to be in trouble. That never happens. Mm -hmm. So, but the kids are going to grow up with the expectation that their life needs to be filled with those things and at some point you're not going to be the person that's supplying the things mm -hmm. and if we're not careful our kids will leave home get jobs thinking that that thing is why they exist right right yeah and that's, that's one of the reasons stephanie knows i have a small farm and on this farm, one of the reasons I, I have my boys and my, my daughter, we be out there uh, working the fields and they be doing some work. And one of the things my oldest son would tell me, like, son, dad, I don't want to be a farmer. And he was adamant. I mean, my son is 6'4", uh, uh, towering over me. And he'd say this adamantly. My other son was just happy to earn what I was paying him, I think like $12 an hour uh, for working out there. But my son was frustrated. Like, I don't want to be a farmer. And I said, son, I don't want you to be a farmer. I want you to be a man. I'm showing you about hard work. This is what it takes uh, in order to get ahead in life. We have to instill principles in our children and not give them things. Because if you give them the right principles, they will be able to get the things that they want in life. And if they ever lose those things, they can go anywhere. Because life has its ups and downs. It's a, uh, I mean, gains and losses. That's going to happen. But when we experience those losses and we have the, uh, the right principles, the cream is going to rise to the top. The oil is always going to be at the top of the surface. So we have to get the right principles in us uh, financially, spiritually, so that we, these financial things uh, that we're dealing with, we can overcome. If you don't have any money today, it doesn't mean that you won't have it tomorrow. Exactly. So because if you feel like you don't have any money today and then all of a sudden uh, you have this hopeless attitude, uh, you're just going to walk around uh, and be like a vagabond, uh, be a zombie and not uh, change your situation. But when, when you believe that you can get ahead, even if you're employing the wrong principles, you're going to take some action. And as you keep taking that action and you're looking at the results, you'll start adjusting course because you'll realize what I'm doing is not working or it's not working fast enough because I'm going out and I've got these higher interest rate credit cards and I've been able to get some things, but I'm really not getting ahead. I feel like I have holes in my pocket because uh, I may be earning a good salary, but all of it is going out. I'm not able to save. So if you start thinking about, okay, how can I put some money aside so that I can at least pay for an emergency? Or if I need to take a month off of work, I, I can do that and I won't be destitute. I my family won't be uh, faced with a foreclosure notice or have a five-day notice put on the apartment uh, because I haven't paid the rent. You'll still have those savings, but you got to have those principles and you got to be willing to make adjustments. Otherwise, you can end up staying in the same inertial position right. where you're not getting ahead. And it's frustrating uh, to be working every single day and realize that I'm just not getting ahead. I need some help. You got to listen to yourself. And then uh, if you're not, uh, if you don't know it all, pay somebody for some advice. Pick up some books. I mean, that's one of the lost arts today, reading. People want to get on a YouTube uh, video and they'll tell you what they know, but what they may know often may not work either. They'll and they're it. not telling you everything for free right. either is what they're and you can't get everything what in five minute in a five minute YouTube. Right. 
you do have to get some books, as Eric says. Mm -hmm. You have to read yes. and figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we're not still anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it meditating, but we need to be still That's and right. meditate and sort of calm down and let the emotions settle so we know what we really want. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying that high-end car or clothes, what are you really buying? Mm -hmm. So I discovered about myself in a meditation session that sometimes when I stress, I spend far too much money. Right? I buy, mm -hmm. so, so when I realized that, I started working on that, which was the real things, and not with the things that money bought. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Um, I love life does not consist, money does not consist, consist of, of the abundance, abundance of, of things. things. Right. Right. That's it's, right. It's, this does not. Yeah, don't let those things. Uh, people are often trying to buy status. Oh, yes. Right. And you can't buy status. you got to earn status. <laughs> right. Get right. out in your community and do something. Start a business. Uh, be, not just a business. Start a great business. Provide some goods and services that the community needs. And then uh, provide it in a manner that's excellent. So that when people see you, they don't see you as a, a woman in business, a minority in business, a black in business. They see you as a great business person that they want to do business with. Exactly. That's right. You'll become a magnet. Right. People will come from all over the place. In this day and age, you, people will be flooding your, your phones, and before you know it, you, the financial matters that you'll have, you have to have somebody else. Uh, you pay somebody to take care of it for exactly. you. Exactly. Because you're so busy taking care of your business, but you also need to know what they're doing, too, because they can spend your money. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you As end up saying, broke. And you end up and broke you got a real again. financial right. matter. Right. <laughs> and when you deliver excellent service, Nobody is looking at what you have on. That's right. Nobody's looking at what you drive. Nobody's looking at what, what's on your feet. They are looking at the service that you give. That's and right. as long as you bring excellent service with, that in, with integrity, you will do very, very well in all that you do. Now, we're coming up to the last couple of minutes of the show. We're going to have to close out. So okay. what one tip would you like to leave with us today? And we're going to have to uh, repeat this because we're going to have to do a second part, I mean, because we have gotten into some great things mm -hmm. today. Right. It's the, the one tip uh, that I like to, uh, to leave outside of going to my website and buying all of my books. <laughs> so outside of that. We can't do that, that now. We can't advertise. <laughs> all right. So we can't advertise. So I can't leave that tip. But <laughs> the one tip that I tell everybody, and this pertains to everything, is do not ever assume anything about money. Do not assume that you're gonna, uh, that the money is guaranteed. Do not assume that things are gonna get better. Do not assume uh, that the, um, uh, the stock market is the best place to put your money uh, since 1929. Do not assume that the loan officer is telling you the truth. Do not assume anything about money because the moment you assume something is the moment you may uh, make, be making the biggest mistake ever. Read the fine print and think about what it is you're doing. Don't just assume that everything is going to be okay. It will be okay if you take the corrective action and you make, uh, make decisions that work because the decisions that work for me are the same, same decisions that will work for you. What works is universal. When we get in the car and we turn the ignition on, that car doesn't just work for me. It works for anybody that has the key. And you got to have the keys to knowledge so that you can make the right decision with your life. That's what works. Don't assume. I mean, that's, that's one of the, I tell my children all the time, don't just assume that the dog has been walked. Because right. then when you come home, it's going to be a mess in the house because somebody assumed that he had been walked. That's right. Don't assume anything. That's right. That's right. So don't assume that your credit report is right. Read that's your credit report. That's right. Don't, uh, and in reviewing your transactions, make sure they're your transactions. Even if they're all bad transactions and you have spent all the money on the coffee, be sure it was you doing the spending. That's right. Don't assume that that information is correct. That's right. That's right, because right, my grandmother used to say, so assuming makes say <laughs> I was trying not to say that's it. Right. I was trying to say that's it. That's right. Out of you because we're on TV. That's right. So that's what she used to say. So break down the words of assuming. So right. With that, <laughs> we're going to close today's segment of financial matters. Excuse me, financial matters. And I want to thank you, Eric, for thank joining you for me. me. And um, this has been a great segment, and we will do a part two. I look forward. I to want it. you guys to do not go gently into that good night. I want you to find a heel worth dying, and I want you to take it. I want you to make the day so awesome that yesterday gets jealous, and I want you to be the person that you have been waiting for. Above all else, I want you to do it your way, 
and to remember life is too short to drink cheap champagne. I'm Stephanie Wilson Coleman, the Empowerment Doctor. This has been a sip of inspiration and it has been a blast. I want you to go now and sip into something inspirational. Amen. Great show. This was good. Yep. Yeah, I love this thing. To drink cheap champagne So I decided to buy me